All right, today we're going to be talking about Lewis dot structures. Now, ionic bonds form ionic compounds, and that's because the valence electrons are transferred to form this bond. And because of that transfer of electrons, the bonds are not going to be visible in a compound. And covalent bonds form covalent compounds, and that's because the valence electrons are shared to form these bonds. As a result, the bonds will be visible in a compound. And covalent compounds can be shown through Lewis dot structures. So with that idea, here are the steps of drawing Lewis dot structures. Step number one, we're going to find the total number of valence electrons each compound has. Step number two, we're going to arrange the atom with the element you only have one of in the center and the rest around it. Number three, we're going to make bond, a bond to connect each surrounding atom to the center. And this bond we're making is called a single bond. And they're covalent bonds in which one pair of electrons, so two, so one, one bond equals two valence electrons, are shared between two atoms. And then step number four, we're going to subtract the number of valence electrons used to make the bonds to the total number of valence electrons. Step number five, we're going to start making all atoms happy because there's something called the octet rule, which is a chemical rule that says elements tend to bond in such a way that each atom has eight valence electrons in the outer shell when bonded. There is an exception for the octet rule. All elements want eight when they're bonded, but hydrogen only wants two. So that's going to be your exception. Hydrogen only wants two valence electrons when bonded. And we would do this by adding pairs of electrons, so two electrons, to each side of our elements, starting with their surroundings, until all leftover electrons are gone. Okay, let's go ahead and do some practice problems of finding the Lewis dot structures for the following covalent compounds. Problem number one, we have SCL2. Whenever we do Lewis dot structures, your first step is to find the total number of valence electrons a compound has. And you get um, how many valence electrons each element has on your periodic table. So looking at problem number one, we have C, um, SCL2. Our first element is sulfur. According to the periodic table, our sulfur has six valence electrons. And we only have one of them in the compound, so we're going to multiply this number by one. Parentheses that off and add and move on to our next element. It's the same type of math when we did molar mass a while ago, but instead of using the atomic masses, we're using the valence electrons. Next element we have is chlorine, and according to the periodic table, chlorine has seven valence electrons, and we have two of them in the compound. And when you plug this into the calculator, you're going to get a total of 20. 20 valence electrons to build our Lewis dot structure. Our next step when we're doing loss structures is arrangement. So what you're going to need to do is the element that only you only have one of goes in the center while the rest goes around it. So we have one sulfur and, and two chlorines. Because we have one sulfur, sulfur is going to be in the middle of our structure. And then we're going to have to put chlorines around in some sort of logical um, order, and we are going to imagine a box. So let's say X is an atomic symbol of an element. We are going to visualize a box around our X. And each side of our box can only hold a option of two valence, ele two valence electrons on each side of our boxes. So if we're visualizing a box when we're arranging our two chlorines, we want to put one chlorine on one side of the box and another chlorine on a different side of the box. It doesn't matter what boxes you choose, just make sure you're kind of putting it in a box formation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chlorine over here on the left and over here on the right. Our next step we're going to do is we have to bond our center atoms to our surroundings. So our center atom sulfur has to go ahead and bond with our uh, chlorines but you're never going to bond your surroundings, meaning we're not gonna bond our chlorines like this. This does not exist, we do not wanna do that. So only centered to our surroundings. Now each line is representing a bond. Each bond can only hold, it holds two valence electrons. 
So we have two valence electrons in one bond and two in the other. That means we to use a total of four valence electrons to make our two bonds. And we have to take that account from our total. So we used four. That means I have 16 valence electrons left over to make my model. And that's where we're gonna start doing our octet rule. Meaning that um, each element that's gonna be bonded needs to have eight valence electrons. And that's, again, where our box comes into play. Each side of our box can only hold a two valence electrons. If you notice this side here, these sides of these boxes around chlorine and sulfur already have two valence electrons from our bonds. Therefore, you're never going to put a bot dots like this next to our bonds. That is never going to happen. So let me go and get rid of that. So with that idea, If we start with our chlorine to our left, there's only three sides of the box we can put dots on. And again, each side can only hold two valence electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Same idea with our other chlorine to our right. One side's already taken, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then our sulfur, we only have two sides of our box left over, the top and the bottom. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That is how many dots you should have on your final Lewis dot structure. Whatever's left over is how many dots your structure should have. We had 16 valence electrons left over, therefore we're going to have 16 dots. And that structure here is your answer for problem number one. So with that idea, let's go ahead and move on to problem number two. We have HF. First thing we have to do is figure out how many, the total number of valence electrons. First element's hydrogen. Hydrogen only has one valence electron. And we only have one of them in our compound. And then our next one is, is fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, and we only have one of them in the compound. And when you plug this into your calculator, our total valence electrons we have is eight. So now let's go ahead and arrange them. Now for this one, we see how we have one hydrogen and one fluorine. So we're not really going to have a center for this one like we did for problem number one. So whenever you have this issue, you're just gonna put hydrogens together uh, next to each other. And you're just gonna go ahead and bond them too. So this one's only gonna produce one bond. That means, remember, one bond is two valence electrons. So we only used a total of two valence electrons to make that bond. So we have six valence electrons left over. Remember, we were just talking about uh, the rules for Lewis stat structures. You never, um, hydrogen only wants two. That's an exception to our octet rule. So hydrogen will never get dots. Never put dots on hydrogen because you're gonna make hydrogen very, very angry and explode. And we do not want that to happen. So the only option we can put dots on is on fluorine. And again, just like we did from above, one side of fluorine is already taken. So we're gonna fill up the other sides, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, we only have six valence electrons we can put as dots, and that's what we did, and that is your final answer for number two. Moving on to our next example, example number three, we have pH three. Our first element is phosphorus. According to the periodic table, phosphorus only has five valence electrons, and we only have one of them in the compound. Then our next element is hydrogen. Hydrogen only has one valence electron, and we have three of them in the compound. And when you plug this into the calculator, we have a total of eight valence electrons we're gonna play with in problem number three. Next is we gotta do our arrangement. Again, the element we only have one of is in the center. We have three hydrogens, but we only have one phosphorus. Since we have one phosphorus, phosphorus is gonna be our center, and again, we are bringing that box back into play that we just talked about, visualizing a box around our atomic symbol. And each side of our box can only hold a maximum of two valence electrons. So placing our three hydrogens around phosphorus, we have to put it around one, one hydrogen around each box, but we only have three hydrogens. So just pick any three sides. That means one of the sides is gonna be left empty. So I'm just gonna put it left, right, and bottom. And then we're going to bond our center to our surrounding. So center surrounding, center surrounding, center surrounding. 
Remember, one bond equals one valence electron. We made six bonds, so we use a total of two, four, sorry, we made three bonds, so we use a total of two, four, six valence electrons to make those bonds, so we have two valence electrons left over. Remember, hydrogen does not want any dots, so the only place we can put dots on is on phosphorus, is on P. There's only one side of the box available, which is on the top, so one, two. Again, we only have two valence electrons left over. That's how many dots we should have. And that is your final answer for problem number three. Problem number four, we have CF4. Again, first step is to find the total number of valence electrons. First element we have is carbon. Carbon, we have four valence electrons. And we only have one carbon in our compound. And next we got fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons and we have four of them. So plugging this into our calculator, we actually have a total of 32 total valence electrons. I know that's a lot. Next is we've got to do our arrangement. The element we only have one of is in the center. Well, we only have one carbon, so carbon's in our center. And again, putting our fluorines, our four fluorines around carbon like a box. So this time, each side of our box is going to have an element, and then we're gonna bond each, uh, the center to our surroundings. I made four bonds. One bond equals two valence electrons, so I used a total of two, four, six, eight valence electrons to make those bonds, so that means I have 24 valence electrons left over. That's how many dots we're going to have. Again, one side of each of our fluorines taken, so there's only three sides of our box available, four dots, and carbon has no available sides, so carbon will not get any dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And that is your final answer for example number four. Moving on to example number five, we have Br2. First step we're gonna do is find our total number of valence electrons. Br has seven valence electrons and we have two of them, which brings us to a total of 14 valence electrons. This problem is very similar to problem number two, where we only, problem number two, we had um, one H and one F. Problem number five, now we have two Brs, so we're just gonna put the Brs next to each other and put a bond in between both of these. So that means I made one bond. One bond is two valence electrons, so I use a total of two valence electrons, so I have 12 valence electrons left over. That is how many dots we need to put around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Again, that's how many valence electrons I should have dots-wise, and that's what we have. And that is your final answer for problem number five. Okay, so go ahead and do a problem number six on your own. Pause the video, and when you have your answer, press play. And here's the answer. And then go ahead and do problem number seven on your own. Pause the video, and when you have your answer, press play. And here's your answer. And that's it. Thanks, guys.